Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another lecture on supply chain modeling. Today we are going to start module 5. And we will further have two lectures in this module. Lecture 1, we will discuss strategic considerations in procurement. And in second lecture, we will discuss the purchasing process. And this first lecture is further divided into different parts. As a whole, the learning objectives for this lecture 1 are to uh, differentiate between four categories of purchased items uh, based on their profit impact and cost and relevant procurement strategies. You should be able to differentiate between different types of sourcing. You should be able to understand factors that are important in selecting suppliers. Uh, we will uh, have a list of some important multi-criteria methods used to select and evaluate suppliers. And we will briefly discuss two of these methods, DHP, analytic hierarchy process and weighted point method. And finally, we will discuss different levels of buyer supplier relationships. In part A of this lecture, we will discuss Kraljic's matrix, but before we discuss that, there is a fundamental question that many organizations have considered, and that is whether to make a part in-house or to buy it. So the question is why organizations choose to buy your outsource materials or capacity rather than make it themselves. The decision often rests on how much risk is created by outsourcing and how much advantage will be created. So in short, if the advantage is greater than the risk, then organization may opt for outsourcing that component. So outsourcing is procuring from external suppliers, services or products the firms use to provide for itself. And generally speaking, there are two types of outsourcing. An organization may outsource certain elements within the manufacturing process. So some of the components or some of the services might be outsourced or the entire manufacturing process or entire service might be outsourced. In the case of manufacturing, if the entire manufacturing process is outsourced, uh, this is called contract manufacturing. So in contract manufacturing, a third party produces items under the purchasing organization's label. Now, whether it is uh, uh, partial outsourcing or it is uh, complete outsourcing, the ultimate goal is for the buying organization to lower operation costs and enable this organization to make more profit or price the item lower to capture more market. So an organization may decide to make a certain component in-house if the operation or activity required to make it has strategic importance to the organization or that activity requires specialized knowledge or skills or core competency that uh, the operations of this organization or activity could increase operations uh, core competencies if this uh, process uh, is continuously performed in-house or the component is uh, uh, made in-house and with the passage of time, the core competency is expected to increase. On the other hand, organization may decide to buy a certain part if the supplier has unique expertise or capabilities that operations of this buying organization do not possess, or the supplier can support improved operations performance uh, if that component is outsourced. So in this case, organization might be looking for some long-term re relations with the, uh, with the supplier. And an organization might be not clear about uh, the decision whether to make or buy. And this could be the case when the activity is not strategically important, but creates a high level of risk to meeting operations objectives. So further thinking or further brainstorming might be required in such situations. So purchased items are different based on different factors. So some of these factors can help in differentiating the items an organization purchases. Uh, they are how many an organization is purchasing, the quantity of the purchased item, 
the cost of course is important uniqueness of the part being purchased is important and availability that is how many suppliers are actually supplying this item is also important. Peter Kraljic in 1983 based on two factors proposed a matrix that is called Kraljic matrix. And these two factors are supply risk and profit impact. So supply risk could be low or high and profit impact would be low or high. And based on these uh, two factors, the purchased items are categorized into four uh, types. The items that are having low supply risk, that is they're easily available and they are inexpensive. They're called non-critical items. The items that are having low supply risk, there is no issue with regard to the ability, but the profit impact is high, are called leverage items. And there are two types of items that are having high supply risk. The items that are having high supply risk, but low profit impact are bottleneck items. And the items that are having both supply risk and profit impact to be high are called strategic items. With the help of this matrix, professional purchasers can differentiate between the various supplier relations and choose strategies that are appropriate for each category and thereby effectively manage suppliers. So what is meant by the supply risk? That is the X axis. So if the supply of the item is limited or it is difficult to make the item or there is monopoly of one or few supplier or the technology that is used to you know, manufacture that uh, item is upgrading continuously, then the supply risk will be high. Similarly, if an item is important with respect to functionality or performance of the final product, its profit impact will be high. Or if the a percentage of item in total purchase cost is high, the profit impact will be high. Or the share or impact of item on the profit of the end product is high. that shows that that is is a high profit impact item. Non-critical items are having both supply risk and profit impact low. These products usually have a small impact on financial results. They are easy to buy. Many alternate suppliers can be found. Generally, these are standardized or functional products. And they take a lot of purchasing effort because uh, they are generally purchased in large quantities or uh, in, in bulk. Leverage items also have low supply risk. They are easy to buy. Uh, and uh, they, on the other hand, have high profit impact. And these are also generally standard products with many suppliers. So supply risk is low, but uh, they are generally more expensive than non-critical items. Bottleneck items are having high supply risk. Difficult to purchase items. A reason might be one or few suppliers or unstable delivery or special items, custom design tools and dies, for example. But they have low impact on financial results of the firm. Suppliers have a dominant power position for these products uh, with respect to uh, Porter's five forces model. Strategic items are having high supply risk as well as high profit impact. Difficult to buy, only one or only few suppliers might be available. These could be specialized products. These could be crucial parts of the process or end product. Engines and gearboxes for automobile manufacturers and turbines for the chemical industry. Now let's solve a simple activity to, to clarify uh, these uh, four types of items. So let's assume a computer manufacturing organization and for the sake of example, we are considering just four of the items. Uh, so some packaging material, the display unit like uh, monitor, LED, it, there could be some soldering guns and robots, some automated process and a motherboard or microprocessor. So I hope you could figure out 
these four items into four categories according to Kraljic's matrix. So packaging material is among the non-critical items. The display unit might be easily available. There could be many manufacturers, but it is an expensive item. The soldering guns or the automation of the process uh, might be inexpensive in the long run uh, when many products are made using that tooling, but few suppliers might be available to make such uh, uh, tooling or, or guns or soldering. So supply risk uh, might be high. And of course, uh, so these are bottleneck items. And of course, the strategic items could be the items that are core to the functionality or performance of the product in this case, uh, the microprocessor or, or the motherboard could be the examples. Let's take another example of a shoe manufacturing organization. So again, for the sake of example, we have considered just four items. Of course, there are hundreds of items and uh, they, they have to be classified. So for example, in this case, we have laces, we are having uh, the skin, the leather, the specialized embroidery machine, and the mold to make the sole of the shoe. And ho I hope you could figure out the non-critical items, the leverage items, the bottleneck items, and the strategic items. And you could debate. Uh, slightly on positioning of maybe a couple of these items in this matrix, but I hope you have got the basic idea. And more importantly, this is to be done for all the purchased items for the organization to classify them into four groups so that a relevant procurement strategy could be formulated. So that is something we will discuss in the uh, next segment.